All right, we're going to get started here at the GDC Game Technology Theater at the NVIDIA booth. I have our next presenter here, Alexandre Pechev, and he's from uh, Akinima, and he's going to give a great talk on Akinima and Physics X. Take it away. Thank you. Um, good afternoon to everyone. Um, thank you for coming along um, to listen to our presentation. Uh, my name is Alexander Peshev and I'm with a company called Akinema. And in this talk, I'm going to uh, show you a couple of ideas where you can use to combine our full body solver with uh, physics uh, and more specifically physics X. Um, I will start with a couple of observations that we sort of made since we've started doing this business. Uh, we believe animation has seen less attention uh, in recent years uh, in comparison to other game technologies, for example, physics, game engines, rendering, and so on. And some of the approaches that are used these days in games haven't changed for a decade, for example, skeletal-based animation. And studios uh, have done quite a considerable know-how into developing some usable solutions, um, but they are difficult to port from one uh, project to another. And this sort of opens, opens up a space for companies like ours to provide middleware technologies and to help game developers. Uh, we are based in the UK, uh, sort of 40 miles from uh, London in a town called Guildford, and we develop animation technologies for simulation, uh, games, and also post-production. Um, we have three products uh, that we've developed so far. Uh, Runtime Engine, which is available um, as a middleware from iOS um, and Android to PlayStation 3. Uh, Ikinema Action is a, a plugin solution to Autodesk Maya, um, which is mostly used for uh, rigging animation, motion capture work. Uh, and also we have a browser-based free to we call web animate for very basic motion capture based uh, work. Um, in terms of technology, what we do, we provide uh, real-time retargeting from any source to any target. Um, we provide rigging uh, to any skeletal structure, um, solving from motion capture data. Uh, Stretch IK is a part of our standard solver. Uh, and uh, finally, we have some features like automatic balance and f uh, links to uh, forces. And again, this technology uh, and all these uh, modes are available from mobile platforms to high-end game consoles. Um, now, in terms of uh, this presentation today, what I'm going to show you in a minute, so I'm going to finish now with my PowerPoint slides and I will move into some more exciting stuff. Um, but we've explored sort of three ways to combining these two technologies. One is uh, via the full body solver and constraints. Um, so in a, in a kind of way, we let uh, physical constraints drive uh, kinematic constraints. Um, we also uh, provide uh, some demos on retargeting from physical bodies to um, uh, CG characters, and also an interaction between these two uh, points. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, oh, something that I would like to mention, uh, everything what I'm going to demonstrate now, although based in Autodesk Maya, is actually a portable in runtime, um, e uh, basically during gameplay. Okay, so I'm going to now go to uh, our two. Um, so uh, just to give you a, a little bit of a, um, sort of a feeling in what we do, in terms of a plugin, um, essentially one of the features that we provide is a marker solving. Uh, so it's like a digital puppeteering. Um, as long as you have some marker data, uh, you can associate this marker data with the skeleton structure. Um, and after that, you can let the solver drive this skeleton structure. Uh, with the constraints being driven from motion capture data. So we are not really fixed to what skeleton we drive, as long as you have some hierarchy of bones that Kinema can animate. Uh, of course, you can apply the same process on humans. Uh, for example, if I take um, uh, this uh, uh, example, you have um, a character, again, digital puppeteering, markers associated with the skeleton, uh, some markers associated also with the hands in, in independent solvers, and all this is combined in order to drive the character. 
Um, again, if you remove the mesh, you will see how underneath you have the markers that are essentially driving the skeleton structure. So the solving now is happening in real time, so this is not pre-baked. And some of the features that we have in our solver is that we provide this a very fast way of uh, uh, producing the, the motion of the character. Okay, so I'm now going to move a little bit to examples that are relevant to my talk. Um, now, in terms of rigging, so if we take uh, an example of a non-standard rig, for example, this uh, a structure. Uh, so this structure is built um, with a, a rig uh, with a kinema. So you can specify constraints on any bone. You can specify the depth of these constraints. For example, on this leg, the depth is only to the root. Um, but this, on this leg, it actually propagates beyond, especially if I enable it beyond um, the root. So just uh, if I uh, change... Uh, the depth of the solving. So now you have a possibility to actually propagate this uh, uh, to the whole character. Uh, but what is interesting, so if we took um, the upper side of this tree, uh, essentially you can link to some physical bodies, which are those uh, red uh, squares. And these are some masses that essentially are driven from physics and they come as an input um, to our solver in terms of driving constraints. So when you, if I open now the bake scene, when you actually run this solving, this is the result that you get. So you have a lower body which is driven purely by a standard keyframe animation, and the upper body is driven by physics through the full body solver. And of course you can, this is just one example, but you can tune uh, stiffness uh, uh, and damping on particular joints to achieve the effect that you want on the branches in terms of movement. So this is one example of combining uh, solving, uh, full body solving with physics. Um, then if I move to another example, for example here we have a, a, another non-standard structure, a very similar sort of a scenario. You have a rig which is built uh, with a kinema. You have the option to sort of move bones. Um, but then here, in, in this particular example, if we take the tail, now this is connected to one task, and you can animate it this way, but you also can link these to another physical object, uh, which will allow, based on the forces that will pull this object, to animate the tail and, and, and the wings of this character. So again, you can specify some stiffness and damping in order to achieve your results. So this is a little bit on how uh, you can combine uh, constraints with the solving. So I will move now to uh, another set of demos. Um, again, a rig uh, built uh, with a kinema. So you have uh, this time stretch AK. So not only you can move the bones, but you can actually stretch them. Um, and based on, um, uh, on this, you can some design some keyframe animation like that one. Um, uh, and, and of course, you can keyframe all of the controls that you move, and you can specify which control is essentially stretchable and which is not. Um, but if I uh, sort of um, uh, take your attention to the ears in this particular character, as you can see here, they are not animated, so they are sort of fixed. Um, of course, you can go and keyframe this in a very standard way, um, and you can animate it, and uh, possibly in most cases, this will look okay. Uh, this is exactly how you want to actually achieve the motion of these ears. But another way is to actually employ directly physics in order to drive this. Um, so if I open another uh, character, so now we have this our dog, which gets some keyframe animation. Uh, we also added a little bit of extra feature, which is this apex clothing. Um, and now if we uh, get this uh, uh, dog going, we have now the standard uh, keyframe animation. Uh, for most of the body, but then we have the ears driven by physics. And again, I repeat here, you can tune how you want the ears to actually reflect based on the uh, material that you use and basically on this uh, dynamic constraint. Uh, but with the kinema, you can go actually a bit further. You can now start combining retargeting uh, with solving. So this is on that side, is our original uh, keyframe animation. This is now retargeted on the other character, uh, but on top of that, we have another constraint that we want the dog uh, and the retargeting to actually uh, look at this locator. Uh, and now if we run that one, uh, you have now uh, this sort of scenario where this dog is retargeted from the original character, 
Uh, but on top of that, you have additional constraints, which is a look at behavior, which is sort of following a target that is moving. Um, so this is now started going a little bit more towards what you can do in real time. So essentially, you can combine these two in a game, and you can combine it with Apex Clothing, and you can actually run on uh, different machines from mobile platforms to, to other uh, high-end game consoles. Um, so a similar demo, this time uh, probably linked uh, to a skeletal. Uh, yes, OK, so this is, again, a human character, uh, standard keyframe animation. So we have uh, a rig, again, uh, built by uh, the Kinema Sova. You have some keyframe animation on that one. Um, and now the task is to get this and retarget uh, to the same character, but also associate um, some new additional constraints on this character. So now we have the source keyframe animation uh, fully customized uh, by the solver and then passed on that character. And here we have the hair actually driven by physics. Uh, in addition to the retargeting, uh, there are two more constraints that are specified. One is the look at behavior, which is the orientation of the head of the girl, and the other one is pointing of the, uh, of the weapon towards the um, uh, character. Now, of course, we can add uh, some extra features like uh, apex clotting. Um, and again, we can have a different behavior depending on how you sort of tune this response. Um, and um, so this is a standard feature which is uh, combining retargeting with constraints and physics on top on the Apex clothing. Um, now I would like to show you one um, additional feature uh, which is uh, available in our engine. Um, and this is linked uh, sort of to automatic balance uh, and input pool forces. So a kinemas and engine um, provides a way. Uh, let me just find the last scene. Um, to actually uh, automatically balance based on static forces that act on the body. So if you have some forces that uh, act uh, on this supporting plane, and if you move this supporting plane, um, the engine calculates how the body would respond in order to maintain a balance. Uh, but this is static balance, so it's not linked to uh, uh, physics. Uh, you can also input forces on the body. Um, for example, here we have forces that act on the arms, and by modifying the magnitude of this force, uh, the engine calculates how the body would respond in order to extract this force onto the moving object. Now, you can combine this with um, the retargeting. And if we go back to uh, the demo that we had with uh, uh, the little girl, uh, now we have uh, this uh, a initial uh, retargeting. So the animation is taken from this source and applied to that character. I'm just going to uh, change uh, the play rate. Um, and now we have this additional object, which actually uh, exerts a force on this character. And um, the solver automatically calculates how the body would respond depending on this force. So this is the mo moment of impact. And uh, as you can see, so this is the original pose that we have. This is the customized pose that is purely based from the additional constraint, but also uh, with the force that actually uh, is impacted uh, uh, the character. So this is the, 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 the pose before the impact, and this is the pose during impact. And on this um, force, you can actually specify uh, direction and magnitude and so on. So I'm going to try to find uh, the specific uh, constraint. Uh, anyway, I can't find it in the list. Uh, but essentially, on this constraint that you have, you can specify uh, the magnitude of action and also the direction of from which uh, this action is coming. Uh. Um, and now I'm going to show you another way of combining um, 
uh, physics with a kinema. So what we have here is a rigid body. Um, so this rigid body is driven purely by physics. Uh, but what we do is we retarget this rigid body to your character on that side. Uh, so you have a bone mapping. And uh, when you do a kinema retargeting, you don't have to have any matching in the uh, size of the character or the number of um, uh, bones and so on. So, oops, I had to run a different simulation. So if I now run the simulation, we have on that side the rigid body, which is hanging um, um, on the rings. And these are now retargeted on the target character. Uh, and as you can see that um, if, you, if you take so if you take any of those uh, bodies, uh, if you rotate, uh, this will be affecting the, the target character. But on this side, it happens that this rotation is actually coming from this physically driven object. So imagine in a, in a situation in a game, you have a rigid body, maybe a character is falling from a, uh, from a rock. Uh, then this character, the falling uh, animation is retargeted to the uh, target character. And then the target character is customized. So it gives you a little bit more control of the physical response. So how we can customize? So because this is driven purely by a kinema solver, you can actually apply all the constraints that we have. Um, so if I now open a new scene, so now we can introduce a little bit of, a, for example, head uh, orientation. So purely adding uh, a constraint on the head. And if we pick up this uh, constraint, at any given pose, you can actually change this. So this is one example. Uh, but you can go a bit further. So you can um, add more constraints if you wish. For example, if we um, add constraints uh, on the hips. Uh, so now we have a scenario where, at some particular moment of time, we move the hips upwards. Um, and just for example, so this is a constraint that we have as an on the hip. Um, so if I now remove this to be uh, animated, so I can pick up this constraint, and I can start from this initial pose, and I can move the character. If I return this to retargeting again, so we have this scenario. Or, um, so essentially on this uh, target character which you have and then you're using for retargeting, you can specify constraints on any bone. Uh, and I think that you have a, have a couple of more scenes where you have uh, a scenario where you have, uh, for example, some uh, animation on the knees. Uh, sorry, on the uh, uh, yeah, on the knees here. So you can actually have those, and you can simulate scenarios. So it gives you sort of a way to take uh, a response from physics, blend it with uh, kinematics, add constraints on top, and customize it in any way you wish. So just to give you an example, so you can probably oops, I keep forgetting that this is now driven from this uh, player. So if we now take the body, uh, specify another orientational constraint on the, on the chest. Uh, so now we have the freedom to chase this uh, constraint. So this is now uh, adding those constraints dynamically. And now we can play again the animation and get this uh, response. Uh, so you don't have to have um, retargeting for the full body. You can possibly retarget only parts of the body. Uh, 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 for example, a uh, uh, lower body or part of the uh, um, um, upper body. Um, and again, you can combine in scenarios where you have uh, in a game uh, a response from physics, for example, falling from a cliff. Uh, then you, you drive this in retargeting to your target character. Then you try to grab for a branch, which is basically an IK constraint. You can take this pose, pass it back, back to physics as an initial constraint, and then you loop through this in order to get what you desire from, uh, from your response. These constraints are, are key frameable, so you can have them as active and non-active, uh, and essentially very quickly allows you to turn one asset to another uh, uh, very quickly. So I think that this is pretty much on my side of the presentation. 
I will be here um, late in the afternoon from 5 to 6, and I'll also be here for another 20 or so minutes if you have any questions. If not, thank you for your time.